I sent you an invitation to the broadcast, but you're not online now, so... Also, can you hear me in the party? Because I've been talking and you haven't said anything. Okay. Well, if my mic is broke, my mic is broke. Hi! <laughs> right. Play the first turn about. Yeah. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? Grandpa, because he's here, he can hear, obviously. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I've got to find someone to put this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous! Right! Oh, hi, MG. Oh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thing? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. It's like a story time. <laughs> it is. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! <laughs> my life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Death, despair! <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I'm not afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without it. I can't. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. 
That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecutor is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can take control. You can control the others. My bad. I can't. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, give the circumstances. I think we should have a test to ascertain your weakness. Yes, Your Honor. Hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Correct. The defendant? Well, that's very much your honor. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Oof, I know this one. That I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait... uh-oh. No? No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name?! Oh, the victim! Uh, of course I know the victim's name! I, uh, just forgot! Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button to check it anytime, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Rot, who is the victim in this case? Sydney. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was... Blunt trauma. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much relaxed. Much more relaxed. I can't read! Mr. Raj, good for you. Thank you. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Yes, your honor. As Mr. Raj just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. A statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Buzz, to the stand. Um, Chief? What do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... Unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Buck, is it true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey! Watch it, buddy! 
We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, did they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Buck, what you describe is genuinely what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was being overmatched. She had just returned from overseas on one of them day one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean? One of them! Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Passport, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on the 7th of the 30th, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Do no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see that that kind of woman this Mr. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Lux, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? My client had no idea that the victim was seeing other men. That question is relevant to the case. Ugh. Ugh. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna jump dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the child, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, Claude. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He won. What do I do? I mean... Doesn't necessarily mean he did it. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell. The. Truth! Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I was. Order! Well, Mr. Box. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Objection! Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Box is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fling the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness sent newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sot to the stand. Get it? Get it? Get it? Do you get it? Get it? <laughs> Frank saw it. Get it? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Sot, you sell newspaper subscriptions. This is correct. Oh, yes, newspapers, yes! Mrs. Sot, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court that you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony, witness account. 
I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. So I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Making it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly was this to why you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? But I prove he's not. You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence you can hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R1 button and then point out contradictions in the testimony. the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, nobody <laughs> to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this free hour gap? <gasps> oh, that! Uh, uh. This is trivial! The witness barely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sart, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Uh, uh, I, uh, 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 uh. Gee, that's really a good question! Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now! Would you care to give your testimony again? Time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. 
Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. You see what I Notice anything suspicious? He couldn't have because the power was out. Objection. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <gasps> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. I, well, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mrs. Sot? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <laughs> Wait! I remember now, Mrs. Sot. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather... distraught. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sarge. Let's hear your testimony. Once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a tape clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Well, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I thought. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Now, I know, because I've watched this, like, twice. Kind of cheating, but... This was the murder weapon, but it is later revealed. Objection! something else. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. Kind of, maybe. <laughs> How exactly are they? Are that evidence and the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the fact over before making accusations. I don't think that one any point of the judge. What? Oh, did I get it in the wrong spot? Objection! Yes. Wait just a moment. Okay, well, you know what? It didn't work that way the other time. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah! Oh, you and your objections and your evidence. Just what do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mrs. Sides. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Pay. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it sends the time out loud. And it doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, this is right. It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now?
Kaiser Man. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. The witness knew it was a clock because he... You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Proof. I was in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sot, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the weapon, murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? This is all faces conjecture. Faces? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? That dick! I never! Look, I. The clock! I heard. No, I mean, I saw. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her. He should burn. Burn! Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shed of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any other? Who case is writing on this? Better think you through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mrs. Sawyer heard was definitely the clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now. You're in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 18 That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mrs. Sot heard and the actual time of death. So, Mrs. Sot, try to talk your way on this one. Ha! <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may sound like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, then you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indi indict the witness. Unfortunately, this sends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sot. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You cheat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, 
this is sad. Mia! I mean, jeez! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, jeez, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doodling the facts. Doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have the proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I can! Time difference. Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it. Right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock is already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond doubt. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence to prove why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you? Mr. Saw it, or should I say, Mr. Did it? <laughs> order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butt. Not guilty. Yay! <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mrs. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mrs. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. <sighs> I still can't believe we won. Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all! You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end in such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is... <laughs> Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. 
Yay! You're innocent! The case is closed! But my stinky Wendy's gone, man! Gone for real! Larry, she was a- Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry! Harry? Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks! I really love you one. I won't forget this, ever! Let's celebrate! Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one that got you off the hook. Oh, hey! Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, was this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. For really? You? You made this? Oh, thank you. I'll keep this in a mento. Yo, Nick. She was just playing me for fun. <laughs> Don't that make you wanna cry? <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Are you sure? Hey, sweet. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about it? Uh-oh. Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? The statue! Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. About that clock. This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And this, she took it with her when she tried. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Hey. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things can change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to behave, believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drink? And so, my first child came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless we count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise. That I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. A brand new episode has been added. Maya, it's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely. 
and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to have evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Uh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clock out. Sorry. The clock broke out. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence book? Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say 9, to pick it up? I'll be in the pre-trial pre meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal! Okay, sis, see you soon! Yep, I'll be waiting. Maya. Conversation recorded September 5th, 927 AM. September 5th, 8.57 PM. Faye and Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho oh, ho, you are not coniferous on um, my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. Ho ho ho! My dear Miss Faye, I'm so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. <gasps> Red, white, blue. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Faye and Co. Law Offices. Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? <laughs> Mia! Maybe she's in her office. <laughs> smell blood. That can't be good. I have to check and see. Mia, the chief's okay.
that strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the so office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. But if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with blood up She probably died in the room. The thinker, writing the term, must have been The thinker added the support records. It's back, everybody! You know what that means! Ah! Oops. I didn't mean to do that! Oh, there's a bit of a delay. But it's okay. You can hear me both ways. It's fine. Hmm. There are some glass shards under the chief's body. The pieces of the glass light light stands. Blind broken in the back of the room. Glass shards added to the court record. The broken remains of a glass light stand broken beyond all recognition. Nothing else that seems like food here. A piece of paper! It must have fallen from the museum. What could it be? <gasps> a word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya, did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a secret of the paper store. It is yesterday. A department store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. I think that's enough to so that. I better call the police and find out what that girl was doing there. Uh-oh, I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that! Um... Excuse me, but who are you? It's okay, I work here. Naya! My thing! Maya? Maya's thing? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. And then call their key and use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Before Mia died, she wrote a message before she left. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. <gasps> That's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Calm down. Why would this write my name? Uh oh. Now I've done it. I better hurry up and call the police. Um, about the thinker. I 
no, I have to get one. I'm a furrow. What, what can I say? So, you're the chief. First day, I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting this late at night. Yes, she said she wanted to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes, it, it, it was that cool. It was the thinker. Um, excuse me. Can you tell me what happened? I can't more legal books in here, even if you want to. You can gaze upon the shelves without feeling you to see the Small button desk clutter with office supplies. Is that it? Is that it? Why are you furrowed? Next to the I know. I saw it there too. I thought they might be pieces of the lights here. from outside the window? She's staring right at me! She's holding a phone in her hand. She just called the cops on me! Surprisingly, the chief was never good with the That old she used before this PC was a She picked up an ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. All the chief's important documents where she filed her case records and recent rulings. The Bay and Co. Lecture Book. Everything is written in the chief's ocean news and writing. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Alright, I'm Detective Duck the Gumshoe, you see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been the woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving in one inch, okay? Great. Just great. Maya, wait, she wouldn't have... No. Whoa! Excuse me! Eek! 
the sword Maya here. I mean, anything to you? What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. C killer? I'm not- Case closed, you're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9.07 a.m. Detention center. Visitor's room. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh! It's you, the lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. It's up to you. I better give it to a straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. I never thought... It's okay. I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. So he crashed and burned! He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. Oops. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is... Unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said! I I'm sorry! I, I didn't mean to insult you! No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... Ah, 
you arrive at the office? It was right around nine. The lights were off. The lights were off, and I could smell blood. Then I found her. My sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear from you. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're almost a famous lawyer. Not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick, it's practically giving a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. Okay, well this is just to be thorough. Though, I don't think it ever actually has anything, but you never know. Oh well. Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm, I better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. I tried! What? That what? Bitch. September 6th. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey! You there! Oh. <clears throat> this is a crime scene, pal! No trespassing. Uh, sorry. I don't know you from somewhere. Sorry, don't I know you from somewhere? Wait. You're that butt guy, aren't you? No, 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 no. Phoenix right. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. No, 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 no. That buzz guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Uh, right. And you were... Detective Gumshoe! Um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Right. Are you sure? Hang on. That's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me dick. <laughs> hey, dick, get over here. <laughs> yes, sir. B be right there. Um, <laughs> You're her law, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, you think some nice as a lawyer? Yeah, the one with the killer's name on it. Are you sure that Mia wrote it herself? Even the condition of rat, it's hard to say it her hair out or not. But it's no proof that Mia wrote it. There was broken glass at the crime scene, right? Hmm? Oh, that? It seems like a glass stand next to the victim fell over. The glass shards are pieces of the broken stain. I was wondering, do you know anything about this? That statue? That's a murder weapon. Huh? You think the clock is a statue? I certainly wish I'd never seen it. I was wondering, did you see my face with cell phone? Oh, that? I had that. Do you think you could get it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second, pal. Chicken lore? Uh oh. On to me. If I tell him what I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Something matter? 
Oh, no, it's just, you know, detective. Nope, I know nothing, Carl. The cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. The uh, cell phone holds the little girl's sweetest and spiciest secret. Uh, you're trying to confer with me. Sorry, Pat, I already checked all the numbers in the mail. Impressive. You're quite detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here. You can have the phone back. There were a suspicious car records in there after all. So you didn't notice her after the conversation. Hold the conversation between the chief and Maya. Okay. I already voiced this so. Did she do an autopsy? Mm -hmm. You wanna know the results, eh? Now don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no ghost. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you got any special treatment. Alright, alright. You can see the report, but that's all. Time of death, 9-5 at... 9 o'clock. Cause single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. Um, about Maya. Yeah? I'm looking forward to that try. Sorry, Pat, but this is one try you aren't gonna win. Why do you say that? I said you put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer. I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. Y'all yeah, done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I want to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influence in the witness with your laurel ways, pal. <laughs> Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. Anyway, the witness. Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything better. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already then. <laughs> You're trying your lorely tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room till the child. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Prosecutor. Prosecutor. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Ah, uh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid that pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost the case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, no? Okay, bye. September 6th, Gatewater Hotel, room for your free. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Smooth. Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. 
in this jaw. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! <laughs> what are you doing? No touching! Oh, bad boy! You really shouldn't cry around in other people's room now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? You really shouldn't cry around in other people's room now. You Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the jaw. Let me examine. Bitch. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. Ah. A still seen painting. Wait, should that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. Flowers are fake, as expected. I know some flowers and tulips, but that is about the extent of my floral knowledge. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Faye and Co. Law Offices building, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize the face from this distance, though. A simple bed. It's very nice well made. Nothing like watching here. So you say. <laughs> Maybe later. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observe the incident. You sound just like a lore in the movie. I like a man with a bit of vocabulary. Um, better not encourage her. Uh, you know, that thing that, um, happened the other day. The bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it, could you please? Let me see. Uh, well, Gmon, if you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Laura. Oh boy. Um, could you just... Who exactly are you? Ooh, Mr. Liar, are you hitting on me? No, hey, I'm just doing my job here. See, you know, you're cute when you blush. Please, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right. Can you just tell me what it is you do? Well... No! <laughs> I mean, you had your little house up, didn't you? Oh boy. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone taking with you? Oh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives black on television. Oh no, not me. I'm, uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage? Hmm. Miss May just is black, nosy little lawyer. Hmm. Oh boy. Excuse me, but I'm the witness? Excuse me, but I'm the witness? Police witness? You understand? How could I possibly give you any information? Like, I guess I am. Okay, 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 fine. Okay, well, I guess I can't talk to you, so I guess I'm done. Hmm. 
seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. Ahem! If that wasn't the most over the top clearing of a throat I've ever heard. <laughs> so you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He even... He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm. There badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer. I know. Yeah, yes. Well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm? Something the matter. You came to see the one and only Marvin Grosberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out of it. Uh, well, sir, actually, it's about my, uh, my fay. Uh, ah, yes, my fay. Go on. Hmm. Why this strange reaction? Ah, ta ta. I'm really quite busy here, sir. I can't go taking pa I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the child was tomorrow? <coughs> anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent. Sorry, in a discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse me like that? Please, tell me why we won't take the case. <clears throat> well, you see, it's just I'm busy, you see? But the client is... But the client is Miss Mia Faye's sister. <clears throat> Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sad, my boy. Why? I, I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? Um, nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? How did you know me a Faye? She... She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice. That learned my teaching techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission. You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never look back. That's quite a thing. Ah ha ha, you know that. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I've no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. Very sorry, but I got nothing to say regarding this matter. Okay. Okay, so I can't talk to you anymore, and I can't present any more evidence. break I 
All right, bye. September 6th, 3.42 p.m. Detention center visitor room. Hiya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Hiya. Well, see, just be honest. I, I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help. I see. I've been abandoned then. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. So she could still be alive. The women in my family... The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in a... incident. There was a man and he... He... He ruined our mother's life. She disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. So you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad. All by herself up that up, up on that mountain. <laughs> So who was this man who, um, who ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow. So what happened? The case was solved. We fought. She was innocent. <gasps> the police consultation. Consul consultation? Yes, consultation. The medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But the man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. Wait. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White. Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Can I just leave her to go home? I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you, whether you want me to or not. <gasps> Why? Why? Well... No one is as sad as a person without a friend. I know, I've been there a long time ago. I'd rather be more in the first place, because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Whew, she smiles at least. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So what next? Something has been bugging me. I just felt this inside that strange woman's jaw. It was when I tried to look into the jaw that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Hey, 
I got yourself in back. Oh, say, can I have my sister's voice? By his eyes closed, she listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me? You are? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Excuse oh, right. I've just come up to a delivery room ser service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe I guess Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait. No. Hey. Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait. Now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. <laughs> ah, you came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White, or Blue Corp, phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? Ah, 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 ah! White, that was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined me and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Give me that screwdriver. Now's my chance to see what's inside. <gasps> what do we have here? A, a wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence as far as child. That's for sure. For my sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait. I mean, I, you know what I mean. Oh, bad boy. Still there? Uh-oh. Time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. To be continued. <laughs> September 7th, 10 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please get the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edward. Let's begin this. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective in the charge of homicide town on precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Farewell, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The 
The body was found by the window here. And the cause of death? Oh, and the cause of death. Lost blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the finger. Found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. The murder scene. The Faye and Co. Law Offices. Floor pain. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had her evidence. She did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hot evidence. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maffe, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maffe. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maffe at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well. Is that right? You may begin your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Snack. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? But my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness also sits up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? Huh? Di did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly! What about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? W what? Miss May isn't suspicious, and sure she isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is punk. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Oh, 
Hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Or... Yes! Got Sorry, I got an order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor. Sorry. There was something I should have told you about first. Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a mental written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. I went the word my was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim. Also, there was blood found on the victim's thing. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? Dash my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y you're out. Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I, I know, I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Wrong place, wrong place. I admit that. You know, my fault. That's, you know, I just, just forget this didn't happen. Is the killer? Anyone can see that. Oh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name, buddy, please. She was framed. Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh, irk. Ha, I guess that was a bit of a top order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Ah. Tell us what was written on. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure! It happens all the time! In books, in the movies! This isn't a movie, detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Ooh. I guess I haven't heard it in many cases. No. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. Facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. <laughs> Order! Order! That didn't go so well. D that's right! What he said! That's his whole testimony? Okay. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Jump the gun one on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. I got a bad feeling about this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Could have been the witness, Miss May. Hold on. The witness was in her hotel room, not the office. Try pulling the other leg, Mr. Bright. Yeah, and while you're at it, pull mine too, pal. Uh, well, so who tells what was written on the window, you think? Uh, no! Ah! Fuck, I keep missing up. <laughs> ah! Uh, I. Here. Am I dumb? I'm gonna be dumb. I'm gonna be dumb. Girl, you make me dumb, 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 little bit dumb, 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 dumb. I love you so, dumb, 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 dumb. dumb. Objection! Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. I don't know, okay? Objection! Your Honor. No, 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 no. I d fuck you. <laughs> uh. Was instantaneous. Ah, 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 ha, 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 ha. Uh, uh, Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying. What? But, but this isn't one of those law tricks, now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Her else could have. You have it backwards, detective. B backwards. The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy, dummy. <laughs> I forgot. No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, 
I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? When? The day after the murder? Because, I mean, he, they'd have to examine it. I doubt it would be the day of. Hold on. Maybe... I... I'm pretty sure it was the day of the murder. You're wrong there, pal! We didn't write an autopsy report till the day after. Oh, right. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. W what? The second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Jeff was almost injured due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility that she lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write to Maya. That is all. I see! Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. Something you want to say? He kind of is. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham! How could you give me a faulty report? Ha! I, I fault! Detective Gumshoe? Er I'm disappointed in you. Handing him the wrong report like that. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation. What? But... Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. But understood. The court accepts this evidence. Well, Your Honor... The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. The poor, innocent girl saw the murder. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Fuck my speech. Speech. <laughs> what? Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Darn, this is good. Witness, your name, please. April May, Edge Service! <laughs> Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, yes, Your Honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th? Five? 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 I can't. Words. Fifth! When the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was back in my hotel room. See <laughs> here. Checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law That's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair. Attack. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the moonlight dodged to the side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bit of wits in.
tacky high was the mousy girl sitting in the defense chair. Then the moonlight dodged to the side and ran away. So that girl, she had up to her and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. Hey, that's all I saw. Every little bit of whipping. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see. It is remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you uh, missed me a phase understudy, were you not? You know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of thinking tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. H hey How dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Yo, what the fuck? My glasses are all fucked up. Very well. You may begin your cross examination. because I was doom doom stupid. testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defense? <laughs> Ar <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, that is the main. What is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, my affair, you would have noticed her clothes. Hi, welcome back. Did you fall asleep? Okay. You would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus! But, but... 
still, you don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Ah, what are you trying to say, you mean lore? I, I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see that thing. I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran to the rock. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with her weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock? The thing girl? I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Hold it. Is that right as in your right as you looked from the hotel? Uh, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right! It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright. Please continue. I'll get you. Damn it! I fucked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try again.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucked up, so I'm just going back to the place where I fucked up. statement contradicts this evidence. I don't see a contradictory, huh? Really? Objection overruled. Try to think before you make a decision, Mr. Wright. What do you mean? It's a mistake! She got hit twice, but she almost died immediately! What? Oh, 
I know what I want to catch up, but where do I do it? Tell me them too. Of course! I remember this back here anyway. Spiky. The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defendant's attorney. Oh, was I big girl? Oh, sorry. Very well. Continue. Didn't this come from another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sad, Mrs. Delore. You can't wear them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. I'm still clueless. <laughs> This one goes. Thank <laughs> you. 
What you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you now, Mr. Law? You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh! Ah! Uh, uh. Objection! The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial matters. Y yes, of course. You will withdraw your questions, right? But questions are all I have, Your Honor! And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with this, these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue your question to witness. Whatever that said. Oh, that was close. If you start me there, the trial will be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Thanks. Because I heard it. Yes, I heard it. Say the time. So you've been on the law offices of Fanko. No. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I, why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee hee. The law offices of Fayenko, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could have easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable the clock in question rang. 
The clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just take a look. Right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Bruh. Mr. Wright! Wish you can't explain to the court the meaning of this. It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar! F -f well, Miss May? What? Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew! I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, you must ask, when was the clock broken moved? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true! That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, you prove that the clockwork was removed. <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves the clockwork was removed is... Take that! Take a look at this. Mm, that's very cute cell phone. You have a girly phone! Wait, wait! This is my phone? Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder! Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Good detective better not remember if he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for this big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at the hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May? Would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what star was that again? I, I go by so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. There's a defendant. There's a defendant me. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence that was already submitted to the court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence so we prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible! Everyone is on the stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh? 
Excuse is not on sale today. Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it. And she should die for it. Die! Whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh! 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 oh. So silly me! Did I, um, black lose it? I guess I did. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Miss May held that very clock in her hands. Mr. Wright, what, what was this? When she used it to strike the victim, what else? Order, order! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? April May, you killed me at bay, I say. And when you struck, the force of the impact made the finger ring. That's when you heard it. Yeah, I just realized. You truly are welcome. Blah 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 blah. It would be my pleasure. No way! Yes way, Mr. Lord. Did he? Didn't the murder take place at nine? Clock at nine? Gee, that seems that time. Order some room service from the hotel, bellboy. Incidentally, the bellboy. Corrab... Corroborates the witness's story. Ergo, she was not at the crime scene. Rock solid. Mr. Wright, you just made a serious accusation against a perfectly innocent woman. Sorry, your honor, that didn't go so well. But if that's the case, how did she know the thinker was a clock? Wait. Your Honor, I figured it out. There is one other way Miss April May could have known it was a clock. One way alone, and I approve. Well, who you say? Then, the court will examine your proof, Mr. Wright. How did the witness know the thinker was a clock? Thank you. 
claimed that Duplicitous was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, we still have to prove one thing. Duplicitous, I just say that the weapon was a clock on the phone. Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim set on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... I just had to defend the cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen one more time to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I, 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 I. Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? <laughs> Miss May, shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. It's no fair. All of you are ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm a bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. Miss May, why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't it stupid tapping her? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that relevant. Well, this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation to the court? At the time of the murder, I was in my hotel room, getting room service. How could I have booked and killed her? If you don't believe me, just ask the bell boy. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. The defense would like to call the hotel bell boy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you sunk and cried low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hope that wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. <gasps> However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May is not the killer. Thus, she's innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss My Affair. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, I will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Ooh. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bad boy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. 
But she said the drive ahead. So without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 p.m. in the mor in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot start. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time of call, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right! I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Clock, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss Day was quite intent that it should be brought home. Oh, bell boy, to who I like, I like iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. Something like that. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine o'clock. Why would she be so particular about the time? You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room, that was so. She, the guest, sir, favoured me with. Uh, uh, an embrasier, sir. Embrasier? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by the prim demeanor. By my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is is this that is that it? Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely nothing to lie. No reason to lie. My bad. Now, if you have any decency, we will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the same. I can't let this happen. Can I? Wait! Please wait! Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Redford. Alright, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. Oh, alright. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. 
Huh? Excuse me. What exactly is a disappointment? Well, I'm not without chance, but even I'd have a little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Uh, uh, er, rapper, quiet. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes. I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were... You didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite indeed. The fuck? Okay. Anyway, um, it was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention if it wasn't specifically asked, sir. <sighs> you fool! I've done it. I've won. Miss April may check into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought the moon service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this in fact, I hope that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And you, Mr. Wright. Who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man who checked in with Miss May. Ugh. Your Honor. As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like that. If it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from the court! Ugh. Upstart amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <gasps> yes, Your Honor. This is all for today. This is all today for the trial of May Effect. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that anyway? I heard that they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. 
Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Thanks. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you! I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to get her free. So be continued. Yes. September 7th. 11 p.m. Detention center. Visitor's room. Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite moving. Not! You stinking liar! I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May. No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spacky head? Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what is it you wish to ask from me then, hmm? For starters, how did you get to be so totally whack? About the man who saved you in your hotel room. What can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose! Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Why did you place a bar attack on me as well? Aw, oh, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold. So criminal. Um, tapping people's phone is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in law school. Hmm. Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Ooh, that does it. Bottom feeding scum sucking lawyer. Bottom? Does she have a thing against lawyers or just against me? Hey, guess what? Actually, I uh, really hate your guts. So get lost, because, well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. Hey, guess what? Boo -boo 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 -boo. Grossberg Law Offices. Huh. Looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. Painting gone. Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah. Yeah. It was a painting of... Wasn't it? It wasn't very memorable painting. Anyhow. A solid mahogany desk. Blah 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 blah. What's this? Old photos. There are two lying here. Something's been written in pencil on its backs. DL6 incident. Exhibit A. DL6 incident. Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. 
Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. A photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took? Hmm. I think I'll swap them. Probably be using evidence, but the picture of the mum isn't probably gonna work. Explosive looking mahogany, blah 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 blah. like forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshi is nowhere in sight. The police really gave the place a wh working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. I suppose it can't hurt to take a look around though. Again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. You don't just have a spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. Have a look at this. Look, I've searched every time. A reaction. This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. No, 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 that's not right. Nice try, Miss Cooperative. Do you have any proof that it was him? Mm. Yeah, proof! Show me proof! I'm so close. Saving you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? I'm not telling you. Look, he's being accused of murder. I don't think he wants to be protecting him. Hmm. She was sold out to late Miss Spice to the cop. No. Please. Damn. Hmm. Maybe if I have something to get her to talk. Water Hotel. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gave Waters rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer uses a wiretap. We can change it, charge a premium for the room, of course. It will be a great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who bought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bedroom? So, you are our honored guest. Please let me know if there's anything I can bring you. Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss May. April May. 
How about I write an David swearing that it's him? And Avi David? Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an Av Dav Avi David. So, from henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who wrote the Avi David. Just hurry up and write it. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. About Miss May. Oh, her, sir. Not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew from the moment I saw him that he and I are the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, then I'm quite sure I could identify him. I already did. Could you tell me more about this hotel? Absolutely! And on that subject, I have an excellent idea. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel. Murder Manor. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great! Whatever floats your tea set. I'm sorry. All I could think of doing the trial was the hotel. I wasn't paying much attention to the evidence. Okay, okay. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bad boys haven't got it. It tells us everything you saw. Such is the man you took from Who was most definitely this guy? Now I'm getting somewhere. This is it, all or nothing. Time to do a little blood. No use playing dumb, if indeed that's enough. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though he should have been a witness to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have sealed they with his reputation. Just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Mr. Red White, at last. Finally, I had a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Oh, boys have a David discarded. Number seven, Blue Corp Inc. CEO's office. What's with the surreal decor? Welcome, please furnish me with the title of your patronage. What the? Your name? What's your name? I was just incurably asking the title that you go by. Um, right, Phoenix, right, incurably. Mr. 
right, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White. CEO of Blue Corp. You know, cooperative expansion officer. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with the worldly challenge. What a fruitcake. Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does mighty... What the fuck? Mighty lawyer have with such a man as myself. Yikes. This guy's arrogance meters is off the scale. Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct. She was my secretary. What a shock it was to hear the chief had just done. Which she has done? You mean the wildcat? She plays hands of bones. Having them is not in her job description. She discovered the information for us as part of her duty. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is inevitable that she would do this. Sounds like he's trying to turn his name to a scapegoat. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter, the bellboy can say what he pleases. I still want to talk to you. If you want to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although, I doubt he'd be capable of doing that. Hmm, he raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? We should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the call. To me, they are mere toys. They think for my amusement. What kind of company is Blue Corp, anyway? Ah, oh, excellent question. We find some various kinds of information. We are a company of the future. You might say, we are the future. Sell information? In just ten years, I built this business up in the grand offices now. Ah, uh, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why are you asking? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic, is it not? Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? That big painting on the wall over there. I've seen it before. You know, I've actually seen that painting before. Oh? Just yesterday, actually. Your point being? My point is simple. Uh, rather, my question is simple. Why is that painting hanging on your wall? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend. A mere lawyer? Worth nothing. Zilch. Zippo. Nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney. Grody Burger. What? He punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, eh? Charge me with assault? Charge away. I welcome it. For you, it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition. The police, the court, they all do my bidding. So I say. But I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a word beyond your comprehension. 
we came here from Grody Burgers, I presume. And Mr. Grossberg, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that the painting of... That this painting of your time here, perhaps then he will tell you? Perhaps he will explain how a man could live life purely for his personal profit. You go now, you daddle. There is nothing more to discuss. Which be kind of thinks you're insane chattering. Vacate the premise. Let me put it in the language you're sure of the land. Shut up and get out. I have nothing more to say. He's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat. <coughs> Jumping Jehazlebrats! Oh. You. What's wrong? You look so pensive. Like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? I'm not seen now yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him, that much is clear. Sorry, sir. I borrowed this. Ah, so it was you, my boy. Who is this man? Um, it's a long story. I'll be needing that bed now. He doesn't want to talk about it for some reason. I bet I gave it him back with the photograph. So you came to see the child? Yes, yes, I did. Something was bothering the old man's hat. You see who you get a wink of sleep. Really? What is that? Well, you see, it's just me and sister and that poor girl. My boy, I owe you my thanks, children. I don't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. Alright, Mr. Wright? No, no, I'm sorry. It's just I, I need more time to think about it, my boy. It does seem to look about something. I'm sorry about the feeling. I know what it is. So, I paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh? Oh, I see. Mr. Ghostbuster, I have to admit, something is in love right now. Oh? What is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just... Grossberg said. There was a giant painting hanging right there the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it today. There's a new city of Robert's and Blue Court, Red White's office. So, you know this. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected, you say? Yes, and I know what it is. So White has something on you, doesn't he? Back now? I think that pain is fairly guarded proof. Very well. This may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get this out of my chest, so I can finally rest easy again. After all, you were Miss Mia's understudy. Perhaps it was fate. What's he talking about? Bear White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years. 15 years. All because of the DL6 and food. As you may guess. The name on the back of those photographs. As expected, I could not see the peace of mind because of the White would have destroyed me if I did. So there's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White would be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has the information I have. It gives him an eye in the grave. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors. 
prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bad, unable to do harm to themselves and therefore of him. Don't look at me right there. What you see in here is nothing more than the way of my man is. What is the DL6? DL6 is nothing more than the sort in court. DL6 is nothing more than the sort called the police guy at the party. It was 15 years ago now. I received the request from meeting the spirit. Her name was Mrs. Five. Hey, indeed, she was Mia's mother. She had been investigating the murder at the request of the police. She fired. As a result, the police call her power. This is what Mia was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and me cleared her of wrongdoing. That murderer case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is a DL6 incident. Why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at that time. It made sense the police didn't want people to know they were abusing the media. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I, I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It was embarrassing to me. Because I told the police were not far behind. I see. Fire controls the law of this country as you see the speed. Get a few hits still changed. I have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office. She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something on what she found. This room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Groford said there were clues. <coughs> Fuck. <coughs> Been using my voice too long. <laughs> Oh, you're sleepy? You can go to sleep. I'll end it here. <laughs> Hope you had fun. I'm glad I was able to finally do it. <laughs>